Hi, welcome to this video. Today we want to talk about non-competitive inhibition. Now what is the kinetics of non-competitive inhibition like? Now first, we want to discuss what non-competitive inhibition is. So let's say you have an enzyme with two active sites. I will call this active site 2, I will call this active, active site 1. Active site 1 binds to the substrate. Okay, Active site 1 binds to the substrate so that it becomes the free enzyme plus the product. Active site 2 is where the inhibitor binds on 2. When the inhibitor binds onto the active site 2, this uh, complex where you have the S, E and I, it will not react to form E plus P, or rather EI plus P. In fact, this must dissociate in order for this reaction to occur. However, if you have this situation where you have an enzyme inhibitor complex, the substrate can still bind to the enzyme active site without any issue. So in fact, uh, what we are assuming here is that the binding of the inhibitor to the enzyme, it does not in any way affect the binding of the enzyme to the substrate. Okay? And neither does the binding of the enzyme to the substrate neither does the bending of the enzyme to the substrate affect the affinity of the enzyme to the inhibitor. So in a sense, both these equilibrium constants are the same and if you have this, okay, and you have an equilibrium with S and the enzyme here, E, both these equilibrium constants are the same. So basically, what, what we're saying is that, well, the enzyme and substrates will bind to each other uh, independently, and the, the effect of the inhibitor doesn't affect the affinity of the enzyme to the substrate. Okay? So this doesn't affect how fast this uh, goes. This doesn't affect how fast this goes, and neither does this affect how fast this goes. So the equilibrium constants are pretty much the same. And that is the basics behind, that are the ba these are the basics behind non-competitive inhibition. Now, as you can expect, the kinetics of it will be you know, slightly more complex because we have more and more species inside. But let's not worry about that. But let's continue deriving uh, what this uh, kinetics would look like. So we have E plus S plus I, or S plus E plus I, becoming ES. So this is just these two species reacting. is k1 k minus 1 and this is k2 k minus 2 okay and then you have this e plus p okay these are the, these are the standard okay we shall assume for simplicity there's no backward the backward reaction can be neglected okay now this of course uh, can form the enzyme inhibitor complex EI. And this EI, as explained earlier, can bind with the this can bind with the substrate to form ESI. Okay? So what is this uh, forward rate? This will be K3. This is K minus 3. And as explained earlier in our assumptions, we assume that the binding of the inhibitor doesn't affect these K, uh, this equilibrium constant. So the forward rate will still be K1, the backward rate will still be K-1. These are the 
fundamental assumptions. And of course, the inhibitor can still bind to the ES complex. So we'll have the forward and backward rate again. And we'll have K3 forward, K minus 3 backward. And these are the basic groundwork for the uh, enzyme uh, substrate inhibitor complex. I mean, uh, like the kinetics for the non competitive inhibition case. Now, now, what do we have? What can we do? So, as always, we start with what we are interested in. Despite, we having us, despite us having this complex network, let's just focus on how fast this formed because that is really what interests us and that's all that really matters. V equals to TPDT, the concentration of uh, product with respect to time, and that is equals to K2 into ES. So, the only thing this inhibitor does is to prevent this complex from turning into this. Nothing more than that. Okay? And so, the thing is, the first equation is pretty much the same. If you have seen the last videos before. Now we need to look at the second equations, which is, how does this change with respect to time? So let's do a balance over species ES. So let's consider the inflows. So we have K1, E and S. All right minus k minus 1 into es okay so we have accounted for the forward and backward reaction here now let's account for the forward reaction here so i'm going to put minus k2 into es and that is done now let's consider this one so k3 into esi k minus 3 back to es so let's put minus K3 into ES times the inhibitor I and you put plus K minus 3 K minus 3 into into what? So this K minus 3 into ESI So enzyme substrate inhibitor complex and that will be our second equation. Now it's looking a little more complicated, but don't get too, you know, too afraid yet. We'll settle this uh, one step at a time. So now we, we have this complex uh, equation, and uh, our third piece of information we'll need is the enzyme balance. So it relates all this ES, EI, uh, ES, uh, ESI, and even the complex EI here to the total enzyme concentration. So let's do, do this. So E0 equals to EI, uh, E, which is the free enzyme concentration, the enzyme inhibitor concentration, enzyme substrate concentration, plus ESI, which is the enzyme substrate and inhibitor concentration. So that is four, that's four of the species we are interested in. And to simplify things again, we want to consider the rapid equilibrium uh, assumption. So What does that mean? Well, similar to the case previously, we assume that rapid equilibrium is established between this, between this, and between this. So all the equilibriums here are reached quickly. So all these four species, or these four, uh, not these four species, these four groups of species are always in equilibrium. The only thing driving it forward is this K2. Or rather, the only limiting uh, rate is this uh, R2 or this uh, K2 here, this reaction. 
is limiting. So everything else will be uh, formed in relatively quick equilibrium. So let's uh, move on with that. Now what does that mean? So again, the forward rate, k1 into e and i. This is under rapid equilibrium. Of course, the quasi-steady state will have a slightly different uh, uh, approach. But we'll assume rapid equilibrium for now, for simplicity's sake. So k into e into i. Oh, sorry, not i. We'll do the first one, which is the substrate enzyme concentration. So this will be equals to the backward rate into es. I mean the backward rate constant into es. Forward rate, backward rate. So this is the first one. Now let's talk about the second one. ei into e plus i into ei. So that's k3 e into i is equal to the backward rate k minus 3 into ei. So that's the second one. Now let's talk about the third one. Let's talk about the third one. Uh, where do we go? Yeah. So the third one I'm talking about will be this this uh, rate equation. So I have E i and S and E S i. So E i and S, the forward will be K1, the backward will be K minus 1, and you'll become E S i. And I'm going to do a similar thing for this one as well, assuming all I've reached equilibrium. So K3, E S, and I equals to k minus 3 e s i so that is our four these are our four uh, rapid equilibrium assumption equations and i'm going to stop here for now if not the video is going to be very very long so catch you again guys thanks for watching see ya